Yeah, good morning and welcome back to NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been talking about total synthesis of various uh, terpenoids in the last couple of weeks and today we will move to total synthesis of another very interesting natural product called epothelons. So, there are quite a few epothelons, uh, for example, epothelon A, epothelon B and epothelon C and of course, epothelon D. So, there are four epothelons, epothelon A, epothelon B, epothelon C and epothelon D. So, they were isolated from uh, sand, it is an uh, unusual source and they were found to be uh, showing exceptional anti-cancer activities. Okay. And some analogs also were made while synthetic chemists were trying to make these uh, natural products. One of the analogs which is uh, now uh, introduced as a drug is uh, ixabipilone. You can see the major difference between the natural product that is epothelon B and this analog is instead of a lactone, it is a lactam. Okay. So, epothelon if you look at carefully, it is a macro lactone having an epoxy, an aldol, a ketone, you can call it as another aldol, okay. both sides you have aldol and a lactone. So, here in this analog, it is a lactone okay. and the side chain you can see you have a thiazole okay. and two methyl thiazole and that has been replaced in this analog with two amino thiazole. Okay. And here a benzothiazole also people used instead of the whole side chain that is if you connect these two and then put a double bond that is benzothiazole. So, several analogs were made as epothelons showed exceptional anti-cancer activity. Okay. So, now let us see two total synthesis today both reported by Casey Nicolau. So, Casey Niccolo, what he thought was, if you look at the epoxy, okay, in the case of epothelon, you have an epoxy. Okay. So, he thought that epoxy can be made from a double bond and that double bond can be made through ring closing metathesis. So, directly this molecule can be open to a linear chain through metathesis. So, metathesis is a well known reaction for the last three decades. So, one can make 5 membered to 30 membered cyclic compounds and simple mechanism you take either Grebs 1 or Grebs 2. Now, there are many catalysts which have come to convert a diene into an alkene. Okay. So, here are some examples where you can see an 8 membered ring has been formed with the help of Grebs 1. This is a Grebs 1 catalyst and uh, this is uh, another reaction again a difficult 8 membered ring is formed through the Grebs first generation catalyst. So, there are as I said there are many other catalysts uh, Grebs, Grebs Hoveda and so on. Okay. Coming to the total synthesis of epothelon as I mentioned this epoxy was formed from olefin and that olefin was formed through ring closing metathesis. So, that was the first key retrosynthesis of epothelon by Casey Nikolov. Then you can see this ester, if you can cleave that you will get alcohol on one side and carboxylic acid on another side. And the next cleavage is here. So, you have an ethyl ketone on the southern hemisphere and aldehyde on the northern hemisphere and intramolecular or intermolecular aldol reaction can generate these two stereocenters. So, the first disconnection as I said is the ring closing metathesis and this can be obtained from the corresponding carboxylic acid and alcohol through esterification. So, that means these are the two precursors. So, you have a carboxylic acid and coupled with alcohol you get the ester. Okay. Now, this carboxylic acid can be obtained from this ethyl ketone and aldehyde. So, ethyl ketone 
you can see this is CH2, CH3, one can generate anion here, that anion if it attacks aldehyde, you will get this aldol and this allylic alcohol can be obtained from this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde through chiral allylation. Okay. Now let us see how Nicholas group made all these precursors. First they started with isobutyraldehyde. Isobutyraldehyde on treatment with morpholine, it formed this enamine. Okay. This enamine upon acylation with propanyl chloride which gave this intermediate which upon hydrolysis gave this aldehyde. Okay. It is a beta keto aldehyde. Now, you do chiral allylation using Brown's allyl boron. Okay. So, this is a chiral reagent derived from alpha pinene. It is a well known reagent for introducing a chiral center upon addition to aldehyde. This allyl source depending on the nature of the pinene whether it is alpha or alpha or uh, S alpha you will get the corresponding chiral center here. Okay. So, now one chiral center is introduced and that alcohol is protected as TBS ether. Then you do the ozonolysis followed by oxidation of the resultant aldehyde to carboxylic acid. So, this is how you made the fragment E. Now, for the synthesis of fragment B, he started with propargyl alcohol following Patterson's protocol. First, upon treatment with lithium in liquid ammonia followed by quenching with this bromide, you could get this trans allylic alcohol where you can see the whole 4 carbon unit of the electrophile is attached. Now, Sharpless asymmetric epoxidation of this allylic alcohol gave this epoxide. This upon opening with trimethyl aluminium, it can give a syn hydroxy compound. Okay. Then this was protected as pyrolyte ester, both hydroxyls were protected as pyrolyte ester and the THP was removed, THP is tetrahydropyranol ether that was removed using pyridinium paratoluene sulfonate and oxidation of the primary alcohol with sulfur trioxide pyridine and DMSO gave aldehyde, this upon Wittig reaction gave the double bond. Now reductive removal of the pyrolyte ester with dibol gave the diol and sodium pyruvate cleavage gave the aldehyde which is a precursor B. So you have made A and B for the fragment C, he started with the thiosol ester a reduction of the thiosol ester with uh, dibol gave the aldehyde and the homologation with this Wittig reagent gave this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde then the brown allylation gave fragment C. So having the fragments A, B, C in place then he attempted the total synthesis hypothel on A. So you took the carboxylic acid okay, on the left hand side you see it is an ethyl ketone. So, two equivalents of LDA or more, first it will generate anion here as well as it will generate the enolate on the ethyl ketone side. Then you quench with this aldehyde and you get the corresponding aldal product after acidification. Then you have to attach the alcohol to the carboxylic acid. So that was done with DCC. So quickly you could assemble the precursor required for the ring closing metathesis. So, once you have that, then Grubbs first generation catalyst gave the ring closing metathesis product uh, cis double bond and now if you want to remove, you can remove the protecting group here because you do not need OTBS. What needs to be done at this stage is removal of the TBS group followed by epoxidation. So, the TBS group was removed using trifluoracetic acid, then epoxidation with MCPBA you could get epothelon A. So, this is the first generation synthesis of epothelon A reported by Nicholas group. He also another route and in this route as you know the key steps involved 
in this total synthesis are polyphen metathesis, aldol reaction and esterification reaction. Overall it took about uh, 11 steps and yield close to 7 percent. In the second generation synthesis, the major difference was instead of ring closing metathesis, he wanted to use a macro lactonization, okay, which as you can see in epithelium, yeah, there is a lactone, okay, it is a macro lactone. So, he wanted to use Yamaguchi's macro lactonization approach to form the macro lactone, okay. And for that, first, as you all know, what is Yamaguchi's uh, macro lactonization? If you have a carboxylic acid and if you treat with 246 trichloro benzoyl chloride, so that will form a mixed anhydride. This upon treatment with any alcohol, that alcohol will attack the less hindered carbonyl group here and then this will come out. So that is how esters are formed using this Yamaguchi's method. This is particularly uh, very important for making macro lactones. Okay. For example, here uh, this uh, macro lactone formed by Yamaguchi's method and from the retrosynthetic point of view, as I said, this particular synthesis used macro lactonization as the key step in the last but one step. Okay. So, that should give you the corresponding hydroxy carboxylic acid. Hydroxy carboxylic hydroxy on the right side and carboxylic acid on the southern hemisphere. Then on the left hand side breaking of this bond will give an aldehyde and ethyl ketone. So, this already we discussed how this carboxylic acid could be formed. Okay. And now this can be made from two fragments, one side it should be aldehyde, other side it should be Wittig salt. Okay. So, these are the two fragments. Already, you know, in the first synthesis, he has made all these fragments, but he also followed some modification while making these fragments. For the fragment A, he started with propanaldehyde and then uh, he used uh, Inders hydrazine, so SAM hydrazine to form the corresponding hydrazone. Now, if you alkylate with 4 iodo 1 benzyl oxybutane, so you can introduce the 4 carbon chain. Now, simply hydrolyze, you get aldehyde. So, normally hydrazones like Inders are hydrolyzed using ozonolysis. Just to cleave this, you will get aldehyde, and on the other side, you will get the hydrazine. Reduce the aldehyde and protect it as TBS ether. So, you get the fragment A. And of course, you also have to remove the benzyl group and convert into leaving group. Here, the OH was converted into iodide by treating with iodine, imidazole, and triphenyl phosphate. So, now the Wittig salt is made. For the fragment B, already the synthesis of this homoallylic alcohol was discussed during the first generation synthesis of epithelon by Niccolo. Just protect the secondary alcohol and then do a two step protocol to cleave the double bond to aldehyde. Okay, osmium tetroxide followed by sodium pyruvate or light tetracetate cleavage gave the aldehyde. Now, fragment A and fragment B can be combined using Wittig reaction. Okay. So, this Wittig reaction gives uh, you know, the cis double bond. Okay. Next, you have the southern hemisphere keto carboxylic acid. You have to remove this, make it a aldehyde and then add the methyl ketone through aldol, aldol reaction. Okay. So, for that what is required is removal of this TBS group selectively. So, the left hand side TBS is primary alcohol protected TBS whereas, the right hand side one is secondary alcohol protected TBS. Normally, the primary ones can be easily selectively cleaved by treating with camphor sulfonic acid. So, that is what he did. Then oxidation with SO3 pyridine and DMSO gave the aldehyde. Okay. The other, other side that is the southern hemisphere ethyl ketone 
he took the ethyl ketone treated with excess LDA and quenched with this aldehyde. Now you can see almost all the carbons of epothelon A is ready. So what needs to be done? Now you have to remove this and then do the macro lacrimization. But you have free hydroxyl group here. So that should be protected otherwise that lactone will be formed. So that was protected. But when you want to protect that hydroxyl group, carboxylic acid also will be protected. So both the carboxylic acid and the hydroxyl group were protected as TBS ether and ester respectively. Now you have to remove these two TBS. Okay. So that was done by potassium carbonate methanol. First ester TBS was removed. Subsequently, one equivalent of TBAF, one equivalent of TBAF removed this TBS ether selectively, followed by Yamaguchi's macrolactonization gave the macrolactone, and now both TBS can be easily cleaved by treating with trifluoroacetic acid, and finally, epoxidation of the double bond with the MCBBA gave epothelon A. So, in summary, Nicholas group synthesized epothelon A in the same year after they reported the first generation total synthesis. Here, the key reactions are Yamaguchi macrolactonization, and of course, on the left hand side, highly stereoselective aldol reaction as the key step, and the top, the double bond, was made using Wittig reaction. Overall, the number of steps involved are 18 and yield was 5 percent. Though the yield looks little bit lesser than the first synthesis, the first synthesis he had a overall yield of about 7 percent. So this is completely a new approach to make epothelon A. Okay. So I will stop here and then I will continue uh, the discussion on total synthesis epothelon A by two more groups, one by Dieter Schinzer and the second one by Samuel Danishevsky. Okay, thank you.